Amen. Great worship, guys. Hey, at this time, you can, you can take a seat. Uh, Kenny Cronin is going to come on up, and uh, he's going to share a uh, which, speech. Yeah. You call it a speech? Okay, I'll let him explain what it is. But, but uh, during the coronavirus is when this happened, right? Uh, Kenny is, was a junior this past year, and he's been in these uh, some speech competitions, and he did incredibly well, and I wanted him to share that with us, and uh, I'll let him tell more about it. Yeah, so I participated in the Optimist Oratorical uh, Club Contest, which is something that the Optimist International Group does every year uh, for high school students all around the nation. Um, and it's a uh, different theme each year. You write up a speech, um, and then you present it, and usually you present it in person at different locations, and you advance kind of through the different levels of competition, and the further you get, there's scholarships um, and different prizes that can be awarded with that. With the coronavirus pandemic, uh, we actually got to do our club one in early March, so we snuck that in before the school shut down and everything shut down because of the pandemic. So that was good. I got to give it in person um, here in Bloomfield. It was hosted at the high school, um, and I won there. So then I advanced on, uh, and then everything shut down, and so there was some uncertainty there. And I don't think I think it was another two months then before I even got to give it again. Um, I had to give it on Zoom, and that was at the um, district level which is their state they're they're funky with naming it's actually the state but they call it district um, I got third place there and got a thousand dollar scholarship so I'm really thankful for that but um, RJ asked me to come up and give it for you guys so thankful to him for the opportunity and um, I hope you guys like it so imagine a world without boundaries a world without respect a world without law a world without rights it's a world in which people like Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby thrive. You see, instead of dividing or destroying, boundaries provide protection, freedom, and happiness to as many people as possible. And though they aren't perfect, they are nonetheless necessary. So, let us imagine a world without boundaries. No boundaries means no laws, and any society without laws is, by definition, anarchy. You can no longer safely live in your home, or anywhere for that matter, because property rights protected your home with laws against actions like trespassing, ensuring that no one could come into your home without your consent. With no laws, anyone physically stronger than you can and eventually will overpower you, robbing you of your possessions and your freedom. Gone is basic respect, laws that protected us from harm, and the human rights we once took for granted. In an effort to eliminate boundaries, we've accidentally surrendered our freedom, our safety, and our dignity to those who would quickly take it from us. And boundaries still exist. The new oppressive boundaries set by the physically strong. You see, boundaries existed from the dawn of creation with God's command to Adam and Eve found in Genesis 2, quote, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you will surely die. God established that boundary because he knew it was necessary to protect his creation. When Adam and Eve ignored that boundary and ate the forbidden fruit, what was once beautiful and orderly became chaotic and tragic. Here we see that boundaries are crucial. They provide protection and stability in any and every society where they're applied correctly. In fact, any time there's a gathering of two or more people, there will be boundaries. Each of us has boundaries, that subconscious list of things you are and aren't okay with. And respecting or not respecting these boundaries is the difference between a pleasant interaction and a traumatic one. When boundaries are treated like they don't exist, lives are permanently damaged, as seen in the cases of people like Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, and Matt Lauer, who use their power in Hollywood to sexually abuse women. These men lived in a world without boundaries. But when boundaries are respected, however, the people behind the boundaries are respected as well, and society flourishes under each individual's respect for his or her neighbor. We tend to think of boundaries as a tool for division because in the past they have been abused for that purpose, as seen in the Jim Crow laws and the resulting segregation. But I would challenge you to think of boundaries in a different light, because people abusing boundaries doesn't change the necessity of boundaries. 
laws, by definition, are boundaries themselves. Respect is built on the recognition of boundaries. And with rights come boundaries to protect those rights. So, to imagine a world without boundaries, one need not look further than the worlds Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, and Matt Lauer built in Hollywood. Because these men lived in a world without boundaries, and they used their power to sexually abuse women whose rights and boundaries didn't matter to them. But on the other hand, to imagine a world with boundaries, one need not look further than America. An imperfect society run by imperfect people, but a society built on the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness nonetheless. In America, one can own property and trust that his or her property lines will be honored and protected. One can formulate an innovative idea and copyright it, knowing that we have laws in place to protect that idea and attribute it to its rightful owner. You see, boundaries are a powerful tool meant to protect, not oppress. The respect built from recognizing boundaries unifies, not divides. And the boundaries of our society provide support, not destruction. I shudder to imagine a world without boundaries. But I'm encouraged when I look at our world with them. Thank you. <laughs>